Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah. Is everyone set up? Everyone is good? Um, so welcome. Welcome to this presentation. This presentation is going to be about uh, Tecton. So we're going to, uh, to do a deep dive on uh, how te Tecton works and what is it exactly. Uh, I know that there was uh, like two talks yesterday. One was mine as well uh, about Tecton. And, but this one is going to be explaining you and show you exactly uh, how uh, Tecton works. And, uh, and it's going to show you how, te uh, how Tecton works and uh, what's the life cycle of a typical web application and uh, how we do CI/CD and uh, with, that, uh, with that application. So uh, my colleague is the main uh, star of the, of the talk, but he has a bit of a cold. So, but he, he <coughs> really wanted to stand up for that. So I'll let him to do his sure. magic. <laughs> All right, thank you, Shumal. Uh, before we begin, is like uh, you must be wondering, like, do I need any prerequisite, uh, or, or or we just can do a quick check? Is like, uh, okay, how many of you knows like, how many of you don't know CI/CD at all, or you know CI/CD rather? Everyone knows CI/CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment. Is there anyone who, who are not aware at all? So we can just give us some glimpse. Okay, everyone knows Kubernetes here. No, there is no one. Is there is anyone who don't know Kubernetes at all? Okay, cool. Uh, because this is going to be uh, in the context of doing the CI/CD. I mean, doing CI/CD in the context of Kubernetes. So yeah, that's a, a prerequisite check. Okay. So just be before we begin with is like uh, why Tecton and, and why we are uh, discussing this topic. So the whole point, I mean, is starting the change with the challenges with the cloud native application development. Uh, there are, of course, every, there are very characteristics and the definition of what is the cloud native application or what could be challenges. But in a nutshell, for the time being, if you want to put it like, these applications can be deployed, scaled independently, and we can think of it as more of like the highly available, which lives in the cloud somewhere, right? Um, however, some of the challenges we want to uh, want to move towards the cloud native challenges, oh, sorry, cloud native applications is like, we can choose, we have to go through a lot of changes as well, in a sense. What are the challenges in those in terms of changes? Is like one thing is like pattern. We have seen like um, in order to do those frequently sh ship this application, deploy it independently, we need to change the form of the application itself. It's like monolith, microlith, small services, whatever we want to call it in in, in their respective forms. We have to do it in that way. Second thing we want to change is something called the infrastructure. Most of the initial uh, the cloud native development is dominated by the VMs, but over the period, people have started realizing the advantages of the containers, and, and that's where whole Kubernetes ecosystem and the container ecosystem is already present here, right? And when we say we want to deploy this application, so, so if you see, like, if you take these two things together, we want to not deploy the multiple applications compared to the, I mean, the number of applications has increased, so we need a very effective way to deploy these applications and again, the form of the application deployment is changing. It is rather than VM-based, it is more of like the container-based. So if you take this two denominator, and if you want to go ahead, is like, then how should be the cloud native CI-CD experience would look like? Uh, so something is called containers. We can, so we can start something at center theme as the containers, OK? So if you want, saying that some cloud native CI-CD, we're respecting the two characteristics from with respect to containers. One thing, the CI-CD system should be run on, on any kind of container platform, such as Kubernetes, or it may be different form. But it should be easy to run and deploy this CI-CD system there, right? Uh, if you're thinking that way. And of course, second form characteristics we are expecting is like, the CI-CD system should give some sort of building blocks at least to build my container app, containers for my applications, OK? Instead of I'm writing it, instead of I'm defining it. If at least it can this, this give me two primitives, it would be really nice. And when it comes with the containers, um, there is added advantage, and uh, there is good side effect of the containers comes in. Probably Shomel could speak about it. Um, Internet about the cloud, 
is that uh, there is, uh, like when we say like there was something, there is no cloud, it's just someone else's computer. You can do the same jokes about serverless. So like, there's no some serverless. They see like cloud, it's just like somewhere else. And that's what uh, serverless is meaning. But I mean, in really like what you get out of serverless is that uh, you don't have, uh, you don't have like Jenkins, you don't have like a server that stays here forever, that stays here as a container and that would, uh, that would take care of your job or sending some jobs like with, like even with the Kubernetes plugin and that wait forever. Here's like what we do and what we want to do with, uh, with Tekton is to have like uh, ephemeral jobs, like quick jobs that runs uh, like what we're going to explain after, like your uh, task and your uh, pipelines, and in a quick way, and come up, come down. You don't have to do to manage the life cycle of that uh, long-term containers or anything like that, or the scaling up, scaling down. It's all a little thing that does one thing and does very well, and doesn't do like a thousand things uh, together. That's the meaning here of serverless. So I, like there is a lot of meaning uh, to, uh, to serve that. A lot of people are implementing serverless differently. There is, uh, there is a project called Knative, which is, uh, which is the community's way to do serverless. And we actually, Tekton, came out of serverless. So uh, we used to be called Knative uh, Build. So we, are, we were like the build part of serverless. But we decided like to uh, go out of serverless because CICD, doesn't uh, necessarily mean that you need to install to install like the full serverless task, uh, full, uh, stack, sorry, and uh, and then uh, and then use it like a, and, uh, and and you can use it independently of the Knative project, and uh, and that's uh, so the work. So I was I was explaining yesterday during my talk is like a lot of our work that we've been doing lately is to come out out of serverless of the Knative platform and uh, to stand by your own. But uh, now the focus is going to explain like what we do with Tekton and what does, what's the meaning of those uh, small tasks that goes really quickly and that define clearly what you want to do and uh, goes away when it's finished. Please. Thank you, Shaman. Um, just to add that, um, so the idea here is like, uh, unlike, just to in a nutshell, like idea here is like, instead of running some uh, some process that will take care of executing your job, you can think of the Tekton as a very dumb pipeline. The execution logic resides in your containers or, or the pipeline itself. Most of your logic, the execution logic. And we'll see actually how it would look like, but at the end probably you could able to understand and relate it. But the advantage here is for the two perspectives. One is the operations. You don't really need to babysit the CI/CD system. That's the one advantage. It. I would say, when I say babysit, I'm not saying you are, you are getting rid of the operations, no. Those are going to be there. But you really don't need to worry much about it and, and how it is scaled, right? Second thing is like from the developer perspective, it may often end up in a cloud native environment like developers or the engineers or maybe non-DevOps expert person may end up owning the CI CD. For them, the big, good point about it is like they also don't need to worry much about the operation hustles, right? They can focus on executing their CI CD pipelines. That's, that's, these are the two aspects uh, uh, about the serverless, and that's where the Tekton stands today. Uh, so the Tekton is an open source project. Uh, it's hosted under or the gone under the CD Foundation, and these are the companies, and also more companies are contributing to it. But the intent here is to provide the building blocks in order to build a CI/CD platform. Uh, we are going to see those components and the blocks, how it's going to help it. But that the idea is to like it's more of like beat Kubernetes native or more as close to Kubernetes. So the whole advantage of this, like, once you're able to get used to with the Kubernetes ecosystem, you would feel like it's omni-channel experience or it's more of like unified experience. You can pretty much leverage out of your Kubernetes knowledge, and then you can start think CICD context, uh, I mean, CICD context in, in the same Kubernetes experience. So that's the one part of it. However, there are already few of the projects exist, uh, which solves a similar set of problems. I mean, then how and why Tekton has started all together. As Shomal has already mentioned, uh, the intent of the KNT was to like take your source code and run it in serverless application deployment. That was the intent. Uh, and some of the things that probably could stand out with other respective CI/CD system is like it wanted to be Kubernetes native as, as well as declarative. When I say Kubernetes native and declarative, in a sense, just like if you want to run multiple instances of the application in the Kubernetes, 
we create something called deployment, and we just declare says, declare it will says that I want to run this many number of replicas. Now it's Kubernetes jobs or something running in the Kubernetes. Let them take care to maintain those many number of replicas. If you want to take the same analogy, now it's going to give the declarative CI/CD resources on top of Kubernetes that we are going to set eventually, and we're just saying going to say that hey, this is the CI/CD workflow I want to execute. How you execute it is your responsibility. I mean. How you are going to do it? It's more of like a declarative way you are going to do things. And the most important thing I at least see like the promising about Tecton is composability. When I say composability, is like we can we can take the Kubernetes pods terminology or the pod analogy. Like uh, in a sense, pod is the basic building block in the Kubernetes, and everything is built on the top of it. If I want to run something called the deployment kind of workload, general kind of workload, I will create the deployment, but underneath it's spinning up the pod. If I want to execute job on your stateful applications, still it's going to run the different form of workload, but at the end, underneath it, it's a pod which is running there, right? It just, the workload fashion is different. Same way if you want to extend the analogy into the CI/CD context. So, so this composability aspect will help you to basically build your basic building blocks of your CI/CD workflow. And what it can give is like, you can now define those blocks first in the bottom level, and then you can build something on top of it. So the two things. It can be tested, this individual block can be tested individually. That helps serially. And second thing is, you can reuse those blocks across your whole CICD and your DevOps workflow. And, and we are going to see its power as well, like how it would basically help in, in, in some way. So, so composability is most of the important thing uh, we are going to focus uh, in this talk. So, so, so instead of speaking much about concepts, and we'll see, like, we'll start with something called, we'll do the CICD for this application. It's a minimalistic Wikipedia application, or I would say like wiki application, uh, um, which allows us to edit the articles and, and publish the article. Okay. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to build a CI/CD pipeline for this application. Okay. Now, if you want to see like how the CI and the CD workflow would look like, I will just give the high-level workflow. So, assume that whenever we want to in introduce any new change in the source code, we want to execute certain tests in certain order. So if I want to just depict this test in this context, is like we want to execute some sort of lint test, then the unit test. Uh, so lint test is more of like the static code checks and making sure that formatting is correct and all those things. Unit tests are usual unit tests that we write down for your application. However, end-to-end tests and acceptance tests is like end-to-end -end test. We are going to execute all, all REST APIs and we're making sure that it's functioning correctly. Acceptance test is, is something is like you are making sure that this application basically able to serve those many number of requests per second. So that's kind of we can say automated acceptance test in this context. And once this is this gets functioning, we will take this application and we'll deploy it into a Kubernetes cluster. So in order to do that, what we are going to do is like we are going to define some primitive build and deployment uh, mechanisms. Okay, we are going to see in that context. Uh, but, but just to begin with, like uh, you'll see the CI pipeline just to, as a first stage of uh, writing the system. So, okay, um, before before we dig much into system, we will just give the overview of how how things looks like. Uh, okay, I'm not sure. Can you see it or? Okay. Can I increase, shall I increase the font? It's better? Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me, um, okay, so I will just start with something called a make file. That's, that's, is it readable or is it visible? Okay. Sure. Um, so, the, so if you look like, um, so this is in general source code, I just wanted to show it, like there is some, Makefile exists, which already knows like how to build your binaries, how to execute your test, and, and etc. Uh, and to before begin uh, writing the CI/CD workflow, and yeah, that's that's just one thing I want to highlight. And this application already has something called uh, a Docker file and, and and the deployment manifest, but we'll speak in the context of the deployment use case. Okay, so now again, going back to Sorry, I need to check just, yeah. So going back to this thing is like, uh, okay. So when you want to say like the lint test, right? Uh, 
what we do mean to say is basically we need, let's say, source code. And I want to execute something called the goLint command, which comes with the something either in the Go runtime or you need to explicitly install it. But for the unit test, which is typically the Go test command that I want to run. But in case of the acceptance and let's say or the iterators is like, we need source code, then we need to build a binary or let's say container in this application um, or whatever you want. So in this case, we are just going to build the binary. We are making that application up and running. And then we are executing some sort of the end-to-end -end test and, and some, some mech target, right? So this is, this is the pseudo-entry procedure we want to use in order to automate all our CI workflow. So, so if you are able to uh, hold this part, then how I can leverage on the Tecton in actually order to automate this, right? So if we take the example of unit test case, what we are going to do is like, we are typically just going to mention, OK, this is procedure I want to execute. And when I say procedure, I just want to say it's like steps in, in this context, right? So what we are going to do, we are just going to execute, in order to get a source code, we are just going to execute our git clone command. It's basic git clone command in, in the container which has the git binary. And the second step, subsequent step I want to run is just like the go test command, and which is the which is going to run inside the Golang uh, binary itself. And, and the intent of here is like now we are going to use the containers as a primitive form in order to execute all our CI/CD system, right? Now if you can see like Tecton provides something called steps, where it's more of like the individual containers and it's sort of the automatic action that we want to execute. And the steps is nothing but the container specification coming from the Kubernetes. So the intent is like you can pretty much leverage on the Kubernetes construct over here. So for example, if you want to do git clone and you want to use it, clone it from the private repository, you can pretty much leverage it from the secret. In this case, you don't need to reinvent the wheel again. You don't need to understand the, the system, like how I'm going to provide the secret. Um, so once that is done, steps don't execute themselves, OK? I mean, the, just like the containers don't execute themselves in the Kubernetes. We need some, some additional construct. And that construct is nothing but the task here. So Tecton provides, this is fundamental resource that Tecton provides something called the task. And now we want to run those steps together as an individual unit. And that's something called the basic execution entity in the Tecton's thing. But essentially, the idea here is like we want to execute the steps. We want to execute those containers, but sequentially, not all together, not con concurrent. OK? Um, and OK, now we have defined our steps, or let's say unit test task right now. Now actually we want to run it, right? How I'm making sure that how we can test this task. So there is something called the one more resource called the task run. So it's sort of the running, in a sense, like in order to run this task, I'm just going to create um, this task run, wherein we are going to just mention the reference to our unit test. Uh, so in, in loose analogy, if you want to give us like an object-oriented program, just like we have the class as our blueprint, and we create the, the object in order to create the class. Similar way, task is just blueprint of the automation steps we want to execute, but we'll create the instance of the task run. Um, so we're just going to see a um, small demo here. Um, to switch the screen, but um, <laughs> can you see it? Okay. So you can see over here is like uh, what we are doing. Oops. Uh, maybe I'll go on. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to uh, I'm going to go a little bit on the on the on the details of tech talk. And um, just uh, so we had uh, so I'm trying to find a story here because uh, I'm just cutting it. So we have a uh, so we, we we have explained like what a task what a task run what a, what a, what what a, what, a, what, a, what a, Pipeline yep. and pipeline runs, and uh, we are going to show you a little bit more. Is that uh, part of Tecton? Uh, you have uh, your tasks, and uh, you have an higher level of uh, ordering yep, for pipelines. 
Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, it's not important. Um, so you can see, like, now we are defining the task definition over here. Uh, this is how we define the task. We are defining the steps, where it, we are instructing, like, hey, take my source code, just use this command, execute this command script in this Git container. In the next step, go ahead, use this GoLang container, execute go test command, and just make sure that use the workspace dir in correct way in a sense. Use, execute this command in this context or this path. Once we define the task definition, uh, all we need to create one more resource called the kind task run. So you can see like the kind and API version, it's pretty much similar to what Kubernetes gives us, right? It's now just we are extending it in, in just CI/CD context. So here in order to run that task is like we create the task run and, and which will be going to refer to the task. And we'll just say like, so OC is kind of, okay, just to set the context, I'm already running the Tekton on this machine, and just like I'm running the OpenShift, which is more of like the Kubernetes distribution from, from Red Hat, uh, and the OC is equivalent of the kubectl, or rather it's a superset, just so nothing different. Okay, so uh, now we are just going to use the same kubectl command in order to create the task definition. Uh, but before that, we'll just keep a watch on those, something, some resources in the Kubernetes, such as in this case is like just pod, Okay, and we'll see like what happens as soon as we start executing our task and, and task itself, right? So we are just now going to, cre going to create this resource, and and then as soon as we create the resource, you can see that it's something something started on the right hand side. It has created some some pod. So this is basically what is going to happen is like um, it's going to convert your task specification and specification to pod and the container specification. Okay. Uh, but the intent over here is like, now you can see like, you can pretty much leverage on the Kubernetes and the kubectl toolset and ecosystem in order to just interact with the pipeline resources and the build resources. You don't need to think out of box much if you know the Kubernetes context uh, good enough. I'm not saying expert, but the good enough. Um, but however, uh, let's see like, it has created the task, it executed task in its respective pod, right? Uh, but if you want to see like, what is happening inside my pod, we can again use the kubectl logs command to see it, but the problem here is like you can see like some test has run, some git clone has happened, but we don't not able to relate like in which order has happened and what has happened, right? And that's that's where what we want to do is like in order to give the better experience, we have created its own Tectonic's own component called the TKN CLI interface, where you can leverage on the TKN in order to just query the resources uh, in the uh, for the Tekton. So here you can see like if you want to see the status of the task, it's actually uh, Showing in the comparatively better way, the form, the information, it's pretty much intuitive. Now, if you want to see the logs of this task, like what's happening inside the task, is like we just simply say that, hey, TK and task, task run logs, show me the, okay, for the given task run names, show me the logs. I don't need to figure out the what's the name of the pod and and everything. And here we can see like, um, here you can see like it has already showing the name of the resource, sorry, name. You can see like it actually shows the logs in very decent way because it associates the step name and the logs log statement itself. If you can just see it, um, yeah. So that's that's a uh, it's a better way to use the taken just rather than using the Kubernetes. Otherwise, no restriction on on using the kubectl uh, command itself. However, there are other ways we can interact with the Tekton. Here I'm running a open shift cluster, which is um, again uh, it has its own dashboard, but it also offers its own UI in in in, in order to interact with the Tekton resources or the pipeline resources. Now you can see like, you can go to the pipeline menu in the console and you can pretty much interact with the, all the resources there. Just, just to add is that we are showing the OpenShift console, but there is a project, a put, uh, there is a project in the community called Dashboard as well that you can install easily on any Kubernetes, so like whatever you want. And that offer you like a web UI that looks uh, very good as well. And uh, so you can talk, so it doesn't have to be Especially, it's just that we work every day with uh, the OpenShift dashboard. <coughs> just, just want to point that. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you, Shamal. Uh, and and one more is like we have also a VS Code extension, so you can install the VS Code extension, and then you can use it in order to interact with the all pipeline resources. So one of the good thing about the VS Code extension is like it has all the context menus. Like, so for example, if I want to see the log of this task, right? I can simply say right click and uh, see the log of this task itself. Like. Show me the logs, delete this task, and, and basically, yeah, uh, that's so. So just giving this primitives of yours, 
going to use it ahead and ahead throughout the demo. So I'm just showing this this way. So that's the pretty much about the how we can create the tasks, task run, and how we can individually how we can test the individual components uh, all together while working with the system. Okay. So we were on task run, right? So now we understood like how to define the task and and basically how to test with the task itself. Now we are actually going to build the whole pipeline, a CI pipeline at least. So what we are going to do is like the way we are defined the task, we are just going to define the whole set of the task for the other uh, unit test, intuit test, and the acceptance test, right? Same task definition. And then we use the pipeline resource in order to compose whole for uh, compose the whole pipeline itself. Uh, in order to do, do that, Tekton defines something, a new resource called pipeline. Here, intent, here, only thing we need to do is like we create our task resources our first thing, and then we refer, in, refer all those task resources in our pipeline uh, definition. And you can see here, uh, in our case, the workflow-wise, we want to execute these two tasks, the lint tasks and unit tasks, parallelly. But once pipeline executes those tasks, then and then only we want to execute the A2A test and the acceptance test. So now, in order to define this all task dependencies and the execution workflow, we are going to leverage on the pipeline. And that's the, that's the import, importance of pipeline. We can run multiple tasks, but in particular order. Uh, for the simplicity, we are going to skip the inputs and outputs. We are just going to see it. Uh, but for the time being, uh, let's leave it there. Uh, OK. And we'll just resume the same demo. Uh, we'll just say build something on top of it or extend the same whatever we have done in the step one. By the way, whatever the step one step I have written over here, there is no relation with the steps that we are defining in the task and et cetera. Just for the sake of simplicity, so we can follow the tutorial later on. We have doing the incremental way of do, creating the resources. So you can see that now we are going to create all the tasks very similar way that we have done in the previous step. So in this case, the goal in just executing the goal in command. It, it is just invoking uh, git clone and basically making sure that it, it, it will to execute this thing. The only thing, uh, just for the sake of clarity, since I'm running this demo on the OpenShift, by default, the OpenShift doesn't allow us to run containers with the root privileges. In order to just run this task or this container with the root privileges, because this make target executes some, some root command that requires the root privileges. For, for that reason, we are just adding the security context and some, some additional specification over here. Uh, otherwise, nothing specific. Yeah, once that is defined, uh, once our task in place, uh, we are just going to create our pipeline. And in the pipeline is like, we are just going to reference those tasks and define the order, any dependency between those tasks. And once that is in place, uh, yeah, um, once that is in place, um, We are just going to create the pipeline itself. Uh, OK, just we are going to create the pipeline. But before the pipeline, as we have already mentioned, like it needs that some security privileges. So I'm just making sure that configuration such as service account uh, and security context uh, is in place. You really want to run it as root, Oh, actually. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, there is way different, like, there is different layers of privileges in, uh, inside the Kubernetes, and, uh, and that's like, you can be, as a user, you can be as root in the container, or you can be as root, uh, or you can have access to the whole container. <coughs> but in that case, like, we need to uh, do some DNS install to add root inside the, the container. Yeah. So, as we have already created our task, we have applied our all tasks, set of tasks. Now we are just going to create a pipeline resource, and in order to execute that pipeline resource, we are going to just create its this pipeline run where the pipeline run is just going to refer, just like in the task run, we are refer the task, it's just going to refer the pipeline itself. So once that is in place, now you can see on the right hand side, it just started executing all our tasks in its respective pods. Now you can see like it has started two pods in a sense, it has started executing two tasks parallelly. Okay. Um, and in order to see the logs of all this pipeline, all again we can leverage on the TKN command, which shows the logs of for, for the given pipeline. Just using the same command pattern, just like chipsetl logs, sorry, taken uh, pipeline run logs, or PR is a short form we are using, alias. Uh, and with the follow command, you can actually just follow the live logs, uh, what is happening there. 
that's the one way of seeing the logs. And again, if you want to follow what is happening with your pipeline, like you can again go on the console as well, and you can follow the logs. And it also shows a nice dependency graph of like how your pipeline would look like. Okay, uh, and you can follow the logs from here as well. Uh, so nothing specific. Um, okay, so now we know is like how to compose our task and how to compose our pipeline. Um, so what we are going to do next is, uh, okay. Okay, so, um, so here is a problem. Um, if you see the pipeline definition, every time we are repeating the git clone, okay, which is not needed technically, but we just did it for the sake of testing. So we can test individual tasks independently. That's the, uh, okay. But the, the, the intent is like, uh, so if I come from any programming background, right, and we know that every programming language do offer some primitive stuff. So for example, I want to use linked list. As a programmer, I don't implement it, right? I just consume this list API from the programming language. Similar way, now we are doing the CI-CD. Doing git clone, do publishing artifacts, it's kind of very common task. Right? So can't we just expect something from this pipeline that, hey, I'm just going to declare my git URL I want to clone, and you just do it. I don't want to write then all this git clone steps, right? So that's the one thing. Can't this pipeline offer something called declarative, and it can just, just redefine and just reuse throughout my pipeline itself? So that, that's where um, uh, it's a valid ask, and that's where there's something called the pipeline resource, okay? So the intent of the pipeline resource is like, in the pipeline context, to define a set of the primitive tasks that we want to achieve. Now the resources could be defined in just two forms. One something is called the input and something is called output. So for example, in order to execute this task, we can say my repository of source code is a resource, I need to resolve it first. So please provide this input for this task before you start executing my pipeline, oh, sorry, execute pipeline or task. And output is something, for example, let's say, whatever the things I've done, I want to publish it on some artifacts repository or some, let's say, bucket, right? And we can define something called the output resource. And, and that's where the pipeline resource comes into picture. How we are going to, now we are just going to see the same unit test task, but instead of doing the git clone command, now we are just going to leverage on the resource. And we see like how declarative we can do it. So what we are going to do is like, um, <coughs> yeah, so if you see like, um, we are just defining the same task. Uh, here is like, but that git clone step is, is, is basically gone away. Instead of we just focusing on executing my go test command. And instead of cloning the git source, what I'm saying that this task needs an input of type git resource with, with some, some resource. How it, the resource is going to come into picture? Like, first thing, we are going to resource definition. So, Tecton provides one. This is the last building block of Tecton. Is like it provides a pipeline resource where we can define a pipeline resource of which type? The git. Okay. For the git resource, it accepts a few parameters such as the git URL and, uh, and the which region you want to check out or which branch you want to uh, check out, right? Once we define these two things, uh, now we need to make sure that we are able to reference this resource and attach the resource to my task. And that's where what we are going to do is in the task run, we are going to, Okay, uh, in, in task run, what we are going to do is like, we are going to attach this input resource. That is the same resource that we have just defined over here, uh, right? And, and now we are just going to create the same task, but instead of doing the git clone, we are going to see the same example but with the git resource. So, so if you see that uh, in this demo, so we are just executing the same git resources and, and sorry, same task, but if you see the logs over here, unlike our previous git clone command, it's actually, doing the git cloning first for your task, and then actually started executing your task itself. So you as a user, you don't need to care about how it's going to do it. You're just going to declare it. I need it. You do it, you figure out yourself. I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. That's the intent of resource. One thing I want to mention is that uh, pipeline resource, if you look at the definition, it's not going to be there, but uh, like there is different types of definition of a pipeline resource. And, uh, and that, that definition is like type git, type whatever, and type stuff, but it's pretty static. And that's actually an issue we acknowledge uh, in the community that we've been driving with, is that uh, we need some more flexibility. Uh, and, uh, and that's something that I work that we're going to do for pipeline resources, like we, we do. 
But I, I just want to highlight like, the possibility of, uh, of, uh, of Tekton in this case. For example, if you want like, to have uh, another VCS, another uh, source control system that, uh, that's, going to, uh, that's going to plug, that you don't want to use Git, so you can't use the pipeline resource in this case. So what would you do? What you do is like you're going to have a task that's going to use your VCS or Git in a certain way that we don't handle like in this class. It, and you're going to put that like at the first. So it's going to check out your code at first. It's going to, uh, to get it locally. Now it's like we have a concept of uh, that just gets introduced, so it's not in our slides, called workspace inside Tekton. So inside a pipeline or a task, you have a workspace. And that workspace is all your shared drive uh, between all your tasks. So you check out the way you want with your SCM, your task at first, and then you can go. So that, that was my point, is that uh, the pipeline resource is here, and uh, it, it does a really good job like to make it like a declarative in a kind of way, but you can use like in a different way or to have more flexibilities with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's one concept. And now, if you want to just reimagine your pipeline with the pipeline resource, um, instead of now defining the git step, all you are just going to say that I need this resource. So whatever the task you want, uh, I need this resource. Instead of uh, writing this git step again and again. The only thing is like, uh, OK, in this case, why we are doing the git clone again and again? The intent is, is not doing it again. The only intent was to like test individual task with, with its own dependency. That's all, that was the whole point. So for example, if tomorrow something breaks, Let's say this e task is not working. I want to test it. How I'm going to test it? So the intent over here is like, you can just run this small amount of block, and you can just figure out or debug it, what's going wrong with that. Okay? Either you can mock this dependency, or you can just, just basically leverage the dependency which is mentioned in, in your pipeline workflow. right? So that, that's the only intent. Uh, it can be done in, in better way as well. I mean, it, it's just done in, in that way. Uh, but otherwise, it's not necessary, as, as Shomal has mentioned. So. If we do that way, it's like just we are going to create the pipeline run along with again it's it's just binding it resources and and yeah if you want to just redefine the same thing is like now we are just going to create a pipeline run along with just its own resource and of course we are going to change the modification uh, I mean modify the task definition as well uh, because if you see like okay. Uh, Okay, now if you see, like, we have modified all the tasks in order to, instead of writing that git clone, we have just modified all this task. It's like just leverage on this resource. Uh, then um, we are going to define our pipeline. In the pipeline, we are now going to mention the resource. I need this. And in the task reference as well, now we are going to say that, hey, this task, you, you need to bind this. Whatever the resource I have declared here, I need to, just need to bind with, with this task itself. And now, once we done the wiring and the binding of these resources. Uh, finally, we need to pass the reference of the resource that we are going to create, right, uh, and, and in your pipeline. And how to do it is like, uh, how to do it is, is basically, OK. Uh, OK, give me a second. OK, in the pipeline uh, run itself, uh, sorry, I'm not able to seek it properly, but yeah. So essentially, what we are going to do is like in the pipeline run itself, we are going to pass this resource definition as we have seen here. OK, just pass my pipeline resource definition. All the way it's bind to in your pipeline, then all the way it's going to bind it into your task. That's how the wiring is just being done. So what we'll just do is like uh, we run the same pipeline, but with the resource. So the, the good thing about the thing is now, now we are getting rid of all this git cloning from the task in your pipeline definition. Now your pipeline is becoming more generic one by one. So for example, if, if you have another Golang application and you have almost similar workflow, you don't need to redefine the pipeline. All you just need to create the pipeline run with just different resources. So for example, for this repository, I will create this resource. In order to test the other repository, I want to execute the same pipeline. I will just create another resource, and I just mean to pass it. So that's how we can generalize the task and how we can generalize the pipeline. And that's the thing that we were mentioning about composability and generality. In a sense, you can compose it one, you can make it generic. And I mean, you can define entities once, building block once. You can make it generic to act possible. 
and then you can top building something on top of it, and and that's how we can leverage pretty much out of uh, system. Uh, and you can see like uh, we are just creating the same pipeline, uh, but just with the reference of the resource. Um, okay, uh, now that's that's about uh, yeah, that's about. Yeah, that's about uh, CI pipeline, and just we are going to finish uh, CD pipeline, and then we mostly we're done with our demo. So now we saw the one part of it: how to integrate your CI. I mean, how to write CI pipeline. In the CD pipeline, uh, if you want to generalize how the steps and tasks would look like, just to give the schematic, we have one task is something called the build container, which take your source code. Now it's going to containerize your application, assuming that your CI has completed successfully. <laughs> And then once your containers get published to your repository, or sorry, container uh, registry, then we are going to deploy your container uh, in your Kubernetes application or in Kubernetes environment with all its Kubernetes manifests. Um, and how we are going to do it is, is just the generic schematic is like, now we are going to resource leverage on the same model, except the one thing is changing. Um, we are now defining one more resource called the image of, of a resource of type image or kind image, um, because what, Ultimately, we're saying that as we execute this task, build task, it should produce a resource of type image just to depict or emulate its behavior of producing or publishing something uh, from the task, okay? And then we are going to take the same image reference, and then we are going to deploy our application. So what we have done is like, uh, we have written the basic Kubernetes manifest like deployment services, but in the deployment spec, all the way we are just going to replace, use the same image Use the same image that we have already published in our previous task, and we'll just pass that image reference as the resource reference, and then we'll substitute that image URL in one step. And once that is done, then we'll just going to use the kubectl primitives uh, in this case. Things could be done in different way. Just for the sake of demo, we are just doing in the rudimentary or the primitive way. Okay. Um, now we are just going to see a define uh, one a deployment. Let's say that's the last step of your pipeline. <laughs> Uh, building a CD pipeline itself, okay? But now thing over here is, um, we can see the pipeline definition. Uh, okay? The most of things are there. CI related tasks are there in that pipeline. Uh, but now we have added something additional task, something called the build task, and that is here. Okay, we, and we want to run it after the end-to-end -end task. And there is something called the deployment task. And the deployment is going to run after the build task uh, completes its execution. Any of this task gets failed, which has the dependency, then pipeline just going to terminate its execution. So that's the whole point. And, and basically, deployment task is going to run after build task. But now you can see, like, or just to give you a reference, it's going to refer the deploy application. And the build task is going to refer to the task called the builder. Okay. Now, if you can see over here, we have the, the task definition for the deploy application, but, but from where the build our definition is coming in. Don't you think like building a container application or building container image, it's kind of common primitive that any CI/CD system would need. Um, so now instead of you writing it, what we are doing in the Tecton is like, you are trying to collect the all common use cases task, and you are curating under something called the Tecton catalog. Now if you can see in this definition, um, yeah. If you can see it here, like we are just going to use the task which is present in the catalog. It's something called the builder task. And it has already the list of this commonly used cases task over here. Uh, we are going to use it. Uh, how we are going to use it? Just use the kubectl apply, and we are just going, going to copy the reference URL where you have mentioned over here. All we just need to add to its contract. We just need to pass it respect to resources and the parameter. Um, and now you can see over here, oops. Yeah, we, were sh we are showing that uh, there is a catalog upstream the, on a community, a, uh, a community of catalog of all tasks, different tasks that can be shareable yeah. with others and that people can apply uh, everywhere. And that's uh, mostly like how you want to do is like to reuse tasks that have already been written. And uh, by your uh, Tekton developers, uh, I think I think we uh, due of the demo issue, uh, um. we are going to have uh, to run out of a little bit of time. Uh, 
we, uh, we, uh, I was going to explain triggers, but I don't think we have time for that. Uh, we can ask maybe a question or two, but uh, if, we are not, if you have another chance to, to ask a question, we are just right there, like at the booth, and being able to answer whatever question. So if yeah. you have a question, please uh, let me know. Or ask me after whenever you have a question. Yeah, I mean, just this is pretty much. I still have five minutes, so. OK, so we just summarized a few things. Yeah. Uh, but we are just going to share this material, and it has a link to all video and everything. Probably you can look at it later on. So just to summarize, task steps define some atomic action that we want to execute. In order to execute club of steps, we are going to create the task. And if it needs any resources, we are going to give the resources to the task itself. And in order to execute tasks, we are going to create task run. And in order to create the multi, in order to execute multiple tasks, we are just going to execute through the pipeline in a certain order. And yeah, that's one thing about it. But this is not the way we run the pipeline. It's fine to, to write and develop your pipeline definition. But in, in, in real use case, you want to execute your pipeline in certain event. So for example, change in your source code on your GitHub repository or source code repository. And, and that's where another building block that comes in, in is something called the triggers. Uh, okay. just so that's what I was explaining just before, that we have the concept of triggers, like trying to handle uh, events going on like uh, from your repo. And uh, we have like three different concepts. So you have like uh, the template, the binding, and the event listener. So the template itself is what, uh, how you're going to define your pipeline uh, to run, uh, what we explained before. And, uh, and you are going to have like some parameter that comes out of the, of the event. So in this case, for example, from GitHub, you get a webhook. That webhook sends some JSON with a bunch of information about the repo, the, the commit S uh, SHA, and stuff like that. And uh, you are going to create your pipeline run out of it, out of those uh, conditions. So you can have like uh, those parameters going uh, going there. So you get uh, the binding is going to uh, is going to, uh, to bind that condition to uh, to the to the template, and that's why you you actually specify your condition. And the event listener is like what creates like a, a service that's uh, that you're going to expose publicly with ingress uh, controller, and uh, you are going to plug your webhook into it. To be able to um, to uh, to be able like to um, to uh, to listen to the events that's coming from the webhook. Yeah, that's how it's pretty much schematically look like. Webhook comes, event listener listens. It knows that which resource it needs to spin, pipeline, pipeline run, Git resources, and at the end again it's going to just execute the same flow but with something on the event. Okay. Uh, of course, we can split and actually execute a lot many things as I mentioned. Just like execute certain things if this branch is master, execute certain things if branch is non-master. So that can be done everywhere, and we can selectively execute some of the tasks in the pipeline. So only the last bit we want to cover before we uh, end our demo is like where Tekton stands today. Uh, Tekton is pretty new. It's, it's just a year and a half old project. It's like almost a year, rather. Uh, so we are going to do the beta release in the coming February. Uh, where you can expect the stable pipeline API, not other components like trigger and et cetera. However, uh, the, in the subsequent work, all we want to focus on provide the better trigger and the webhook uh, support. And then we want to build something called the task, and we want to enhance our catalog, and we want to emulate something called the marketplace experience. It's very similar like uh, what Docker did with the containers. So it's very simple, simple things like every time you need to do something in your container world, you're going to pull something from registry instead of you writing everything. And you are going to build something top of it. Similar experience we want to emulate over here is like how you are going to compose your pipeline. Some things are pre presently available on the marketplace. Put it, pull it down, and build something on top of it. And the last thing is like the pipeline resource extension is coming into picture, as already mentioned. It has uh, limitations right now. Uh, but we are addressing that issue as well. So those are the few things you could expect in uh, the post beta release. Uh, we are out of time. Yeah, and guess we are done with us. Thank you so much for listening to us patiently. Thank you.